in a world that often seems ruled by chaos and noise, there lies a powerful secret known by the ancient Stoics that can transform the way you experience life. It's not found in the clamor of the crowd, nor is it hidden in the relentless chase for fleeting pleasures. This secret is the art of mastering your own mind, a path to tranquility and strength that Stoicism teaches with elegant simplicity. Today, we're diving deep into this profound philosophy to uncover how the Stoic way of life can offer you not just peace, but also a clarity and resilience that stands unshaken even in life's storms. Join me as we explore how to harness these timeless truths to steer through our modern world with the wisdom of the Stoics guiding every step. Whether you're battling daily stresses or seeking a deeper sense of fulfillment, understanding how to control your mind the Stoic way isn't just about coping with life, it's about thriving in it. If you appreciate what we're diving into here, a simple free favor I'll ask from you is to hit the subscribe button and trust me, you won't want to skip any part of this journey we're on together today. One of the most liberating teachings of Stoicism hinges on a simple yet profound idea. The only thing truly within our control is ourselves, our reactions, our emotions, and our thoughts. This principle encourages us to detach from the heavy weight of others' opinions. In our journey today, we delve into why letting go of what others think isn't just freeing. It's a strategic move towards mastering your own mind. Think about it. How often have you changed a decision, hesitated on a new venture, or even altered your appearance based on what you thought others might say or think. It's a common trap, one that can lead to a life driven by external validation rather than internal conviction. Stoicism teaches us to shift this focus. By anchoring our actions and thoughts in our own values, we strengthen our mental fortitude against the chaos of external judgments. Let's consider Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and a Stoic philosopher who famously said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. His words are a call to focus on our own mental responses rather than trying to control the uncontrollable. This doesn't mean we become indifferent to others, but rather that we prioritize our own judgment and peace of mind above external approval. This philosophy doesn't ask us to disregard feedback completely. Instead, it empowers us to choose which pieces of feedback are constructive and aligned with our deeper goals and which are merely distractions. It's about cultivating a garden within where the seeds of your thoughts are nurtured by your own values and convictions, not trampled by the judgments of others. Imagine the freedom of making choices without fearing criticism or seeking approval. You begin to live more authentically guided by what truly matters to you. As you practice this stoic approach, you'll find that not only does your dependence on external validation wane, but your confidence and inner peace swell. This isn't just about toughening up in the traditional sense. It's about cultivating an inner landscape where your emotions serve you rather than control you. This is where Stoicism offers invaluable insights. The Stoics didn't teach suppression of emotion, but rather the understanding and managing of emotions to enhance well-being and personal growth. Consider the Stoic practice of viewing obstacles as opportunities, a method championed by the philosopher Seneca. He argued that every challenge or hardship was a chance to practice virtues such as patience, courage, and temperance.
By reframing our struggles as opportunities to develop strength, we transform our emotional response to them. Instead of feeling overwhelmed by adversity, we can approach it with a sense of purpose and use it as a stepping stone toward greater resilience. Another key aspect of cultivating emotional resilience is maintaining a perspective that aligns with reality. Epictetus taught that our distress comes not from events themselves, but from our judgments about them. By adjusting our judgments and expectations to be more in line with reality, we reduce unnecessary suffering. For instance, if we accept that we can't control the actions of others, but can control our reactions, we're less likely to be upset by someone else's behavior. Emotional resilience also involves understanding that emotions themselves are not commands. Just because we feel angry, hurt, or anxious doesn't mean we are compelled to act on those feelings. This distance between feeling and action is critical. It gives us the time to choose our response. The Stoics called this the space in which we can exercise our reason and freedom. To enhance your emotional resilience, start by incorporating daily reflections. And each day by asking yourself what went well, what challenges you faced, and how you responded. This practice of self-reflection reinforces your ability to apply Stoic principles in everyday life, gradually building your resilience. Think about how you can apply them not just in moments of crisis, but as part of your daily routine. Emotional resilience isn't built overnight, but with consistent practice and a stoic mindset, you'll find yourself more prepared to handle whatever life throws your way. Not just surviving your experiences, but thriving through them. At the heart of stoic philosophy is the profound recognition that while we can't control what happens to us, we can control how we perceive and react to these events. This is the true power of perception, realizing that our reactions are molded not by the events themselves, but by the interpretations we attach to them. Imagine this, you're stuck in traffic and running late for an important meeting. You can perceive this situation as a disaster a narrative that might lead to anger and frustration. Alternatively, you could see it as an opportunity to listen to a favorite podcast or audiobook, thus reclaiming the time and transforming a frustrating experience into an enjoyable one. The stoic practice of perception management is about choosing the latter approach actively deciding to view circumstances in a way that aligns with inner peace and wisdom. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher, famously said, men are disturbed not by things, but by the view which they take of them. This encapsulates the essence of Stoic thought on perception. It's a reminder that our peace of mind comes not from the events in our lives, but from our responses to them. By training ourselves to adopt more helpful perspectives, we gain a significant measure of control over our emotional well-being. Cultivating this skill begins with mindfulness and self-awareness. It involves observing our automatic thoughts and questioning their accuracy. Does this thought reflect reality? Is there another way to view this situation? This practice of questioning and reframing is a form of cognitive restructuring that can dramatically alter our emotional landscape. To integrate this into your daily life, start by identifying situations where your initial reaction might not be the most constructive. Experiment with reframing your thoughts to see the situation in a new light. 
practice could be as simple as interpreting a critique at work not as an attack on your abilities, but as valuable feedback that can spur personal and professional growth. The power of perception is not about deceiving ourselves or ignoring reality. It's about adjusting our lens so that we can see life more clearly and respond to it in ways that are aligned with our deepest values. By practicing this stoic technique, you not only enhance your own resilience, but also your capacity for happiness and fulfillment. It's a transformative process, turning everyday challenges into opportunities for growth and self-discovery. This doesn't merely mean taking more hikes or planting a garden, though those are fantastic ways to connect with nature. It's deeper, it's about recognizing and adhering to the natural laws of human behavior and the universe. The Stoics believe at every part of the cosmos, including humans, as a role to play, a purpose dictated by nature itself. For us, this means living a life of virtue in accordance with reason, which the Stoics considered the highest function of our nature. Marcus Aurelius often wrote about nature's interconnectedness in his personal writings. He saw each individual's actions as part of a larger symphony of the universe where going against this natural order causes discord and unhappiness. In practical terms, living according to nature involves several key behaviors. First, it encourages the practice of self-reflection to understand our place within the larger context of the world. This reflection leads to a profound understanding of what is within our control and what is not, helping us to live more harmoniously with the inevitable. For example, accepting that we cannot control other people's actions or the outcome of many situations, but we can control our reactions to them. Moreover, this Stoic principle teaches us to embrace simplicity and to find satisfaction in it. This could mean reducing our desires to align more closely with what is naturally necessary and sufficient for happiness. It asks us to question, are our pursuits and desires in line with our true nature, or are they artificially constructed by societal pressures? To cultivate a life according to nature, start small. Reflect each day on where you might be resisting natural flows in your life or where you might be forcing outcomes. Try to align more closely with the rhythm of your environment. Wake with the sun, eat seasonally, and listen more deeply to your body's needs and the needs of others around you. This approach isn't about relinquishing ambition or desire, but about harmonizing those drives with the natural order, ensuring they arise from true necessity and virtue rather than fleeting whims. Let's remember that to live according to nature is to embrace a life of harmony, simplicity, and virtue.